50 pounds, 50, 60 pounds. Nice. Yeah, you yeah. Gotta, gotta give you some kudos here. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, how about this one? <laughs> cool. Seriously though, that's that's thanks. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, bro. Welcome to Taking the Credit episode number 57, and I am very, very happy to have Mike Ruggles here with me. Thank you so much for making the trip up here, Mike. Uh, also, just overall happy to have you here. Mike is a friend who I've probably talked about in somewhere in the 56, 57, oh yeah, 56 episodes, because I've known Mike for a while, and, and if you hear a lot of background noise, that's just my dog chewing on a bone right by my feet, so... <laughs> it's pretty uh, cute. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. I mean, yeah, thank you. She appreciates you now, so... Yeah, we're becoming friends. It's I, great. That's right. So, uh, Mike and I, luckily, we've had an opportunity to spend a good amount of time this month doing some stuff together, Halloween-based activities on, in our friend group, and, and uh, I mean, if you're listening, you probably know Kirsten and I are very much homebodies, but when we go out, Mike is one of the few people that we get to see, and I'm always excited to see Mike. Good energy, good dude. Mike, thanks for being here. Dude, happy to be here. It's very, uh, very exciting for me because um, I feel like we just have a lot of like. Yeah, and, and it's easy to talk to you. Like, uh, I, I yeah. feel like we <laughs> will bounce ideas off of each other and just it goes on for uh, for, for a long time. And it's yeah. great every single time. Like, my that's one of my favorite things about you, man. It's like, just I can talk to you about things that I geek out about. It's great. <laughs> well, I, and I appreciate it because we, uh, although like I'll, I'll say if somebody's really passionate about something or really interested about it, even if I'm not so interested about it, I really like that yeah, energy. Sure. But we are passionate about the same things or at least very similar things. And uh, our meeting was just kind of happenstance. Yeah, really. For sure. Like, I feel like that's how a lot of my good friendships are. <laughs> like they just, you know, nice. yeah. Like just kind of like gravitationally drawn to each other. It feels like, or that's what I like to think. Anyway. Yeah. Which yeah. is cool. I mean, for, m for me personally, like, um, for the most part I've I've been friendly with everybody, but when it comes to like friends, like in, uh, elementary school, middle school, high school, college, like, I would have like Nick and Brian and like maybe like three, really one to three people that I could actually expend like that energy and like be friends, friends with. Although I was friendly with everybody, it's it takes extra work or commitment really to be a friend. And so like my friends now are still those friends because that's like where all my energy went. And you're from Michigan, although not from the same area, but like everyone that I'm still friends with out here is from there. Yeah, like I don't really have outside of my wife, shout out to Kirsten, uh, I don't really like know too many people from here. Yeah. So and that's uh, kind of how it worked out for us too. It's funny, like our tightest friend group out here um it's all kind of been through the happenstance we didn't know anybody back in michigan but turns out that a lot of our friends out here are from michigan we just got a chance to meet them while we were out here you yeah know, just kind of doing the stuff that we like how did you guys end up coming out here yeah um so it was it was a to i think the the entire process from beginning to end to like having the thought to actually like loading the moving truck was a month no way and we'd wow. never been to denver before so wow. we <laughs> we kind of decided to committed. yeah no well it's it's um we just had the opportunity so Liz got freed up with work and I was doing wedding videos at the time so mm. we had kind of this this like short little period where you know we can choose to go wherever we want wow. you know and then we um we looked at Denver wow. and it's it's all about all the things that we like to do we like to be outside and you know just 
just everything about Colorado. We yeah. just we just love, and um, we didn't know it at the time, but we we're like, that looks like a cool place. So we bought a flight there wow. and <laughs> bought a flight here, and um, we just had like this turn and burn weekend where Liz did two interviews. I uh, really? I applied for jobs out here too, but she was the only one that got the call. So she uh, did an interview for uh, Vale at her current job right now, and then like another place that was downtown. And um, it's it's funny. We just had a weekend here. We explored. We applied at apartments, and we're like, if if one of these job offers come through, we're we're moving. Wow! And just that it happened. That's so awesome. Yeah, it was really cool. That was that was a fun little little life experience there. So you guys were just like ready to go somewhere yeah we were well just where I at mean. least we wanted to try you yeah. know like that's the thing is w- it, it could have turned out you know a different way where you know like we didn't get any job offers i tried mm-hmm. in seattle too that was another place i, oh, okay. I threw out some resumes sure. um nice but place. yeah yeah we went there on our honeymoon oh, so yeah, very cool. that was good um but anyways um yeah that's the story of how wow. we ended up out here w- what year did you get here uh tw- the very end of 2017 so december okay. of 2017 so if i'm correct on the timeline you guys were here before jake and yeah. rebecca they, came fo- out they followed us out okay, here okay 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 <laughs> so those are so jake is jake is how i pretty much how uh i know mike how brian probably yeah jake's kind of the great connector of our of our whole group jake is the link and the interesting thing about jake is he was probably i mean he could have been friends with brian actually but i never went to school with jake but i went to the school jake like i showed up the year jake moved somewhere else so I became friends with people who Jake grew up being friends with. Gotcha. So that's how I met Jake was because we had a mutual friend who became like my first best friend when I moved there, but Jake was still visiting and hanging out. So uh, I I mean, I saw him, I think I saw him quite a bit um, between middle school and high school and then maybe like once or twice in college, but uh, it had been quite a while. Yeah. So when he moved out here and reached out, like, that's really cool. I mean, I, I, I've i known, I would say I know one other person who went to high school uh, with me who moved out here and reached out. But, like, w- even though Jake and I were never really close, like, this other person well, and I weren't, were never really close either, but nothing happened. Yeah. But, like, Jake will make it happen. Yeah, Jake's that kind of guy. Yeah. And like shouts to my brother in law Jake because he's oh. he's he's like all of his friends are super close and he puts in the effort yeah. to like really, you know, like yeah. make those friendships and like it's crazy how many friends Jake's has. But yeah, he he, he does a like he's he's a good good friend guy. You know? I've come to respect him yeah. very much. Very much. Yeah. Yeah. He is a he is a really good guy. I mean I, I, he and his wife, your wife, you it's it's nice to have you know, like, uh, I don't know the direct quote. I don't know who said it. But the idea that you're the sum of your five closest friends mm. is a pretty realistic thing. Yeah. And to have good friends who are like, well, who are just positive. It's yeah. It. Let's talk about that a little bit. So I kind of geek out a little bit about the the people that are in your life just kind of like influencing your life Mm -hmm. you know like the people that are close so your five closest friends for example like the the people that you spend your time with and around just really really have i think it's underrated how much influence that has on your life and your life's trajectory you know i mean it uh, it means so much like the uh, some of these sayings are like kind of cliche like you can't choose your family but you can choose your friends and and sometimes i just hate saying the word cliche because often it just means that it's a thing like i hear like, like caught on for a reason right deep breathing is cliche and it's like it works yeah right and so <laughs> yeah like you can choose your friends and it's really important that you choose good ones but it can also be very difficult to choose good friends if you don't have good friends <laughs> to help you choose <laughs> good people i i, I yeah, mean 100 percent. yeah i feel very fortunate in that and uh like a reason why i uh, probably remained friends with brian and nick for so long is like the foundation was just humor like just having a good time and having fun and the drama's always been 
very minimal to non-existent. And so it's like, why would you choose other people to like, yeah. So anyway, yeah. I think it means a ton. It does. It's advice that I, I mean, maybe not advice, but like in doing therapy, it's like something important to point out along with exercise, but exercise is important to you, right? Yeah. How much of that do you think influences your mental health? Yeah, it's, it's huge. Um, and I, I don't have the right routines in yet and it's Mm. shame on me because I know how much of a difference it makes. Mm. Like I, um, I was trying to get into like running or road biking in the morning before, Mm. before I'd even start my day because the days that I managed to do it and like wake up at 5 a.m. and just like get out there and get after it, like come, coming back and, and just, you know, getting through work. Um, it's just so much easier. I'm in, I'm in a way better mood. Those endorphins are kickstarted, you know, Mm -hmm. like a workout and a cup of coffee in the morning, man. That's the way to just like, woo. Yeah. Take off. But that's the thing. It's like, you know, just putting in the effort. And I've, I've, I've been really geeking out about habits lately too. Mm. Like it's just, it's hard. <laughs> like, and it's, it's no excuse, but man, just like doing something consistently enough to where like it, it's no longer becomes a thought in your head. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's a really tough, like bridge to bridge to cross there, you it, know? And it's exactly what you're saying. It's like the art or, I mean, I guess the process or art of forming these habits and routines yeah and there's there's people that are just boss at it too like um like there's there, there <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> uh but like yeah have you read that uh the power of habit book i haven't uh, i haven't i've heard uh another one that's often recommended is like the seven habits of yeah highly uh, successful like people or something highly like. successful people yeah that sounds right yeah but i haven't um i haven't but like that's the thing is they've got it down to a science now. Mm-hmm. Like you, you look, read these books and you know, like anybody that's got it down will just tell you the formula and it's not hard, you know, like it's, it's just, it's, it is hard. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's for like a what brief you... time though. Yeah. Like my understanding is that it's like three weeks roughly yeah. to form a new habit. But I mean, that three weeks can be really challenging. But another thing that could help is accountability. Yeah, like definitely. And having get... an accountability partner is yeah. key. Yeah, uh, d- Dude. I, um, one, uh, so one of the things like I don't, uh, there's a lot that I have to learn and I am not the end all product of like success in any form. The only reason I'm saying any of this is because often the habits that are shared in those, like this is what you need to be doing is shit that I do. Yeah. Like with that said like the person who authored either of those books is way more successful than i am but like those f- fundamental principles yeah. that are often talked about getting up and working out like uh eating healthy drinking water whatever like being mindful empathetic these sorts of things like they really help uh it's not the only answer but like there's a lot to it so I guess I don't really necessarily feel like that material is material that I'm missing fair solely because I've been doing this sort of stuff like to the point where I don't talk about working out because I do it every day, literally every day as soon as I wake up and it's just like it's just as much a part of my day. It would be just as odd for me to say I showered today. Yeah, right. Because it's like that's routine. Yeah. And I mean, I have routines that probably aren't so good for me that I should change. But yeah, I guess like there is, I I agree with you that there's a lot to, there's a lot to struggling through creating a routine and there's a lot of benefit on the back end of having a routine, especially with exercise, I guess maybe more specifically with exercise. Yeah. But well, an exercise I feel like is almost the easiest one, at least for me, just because of the, the bent, like how I feel afterwards. Yeah. Right. Like there's, there's gratification at the other side of it yeah. and it can be instant. You know, like I can go down there and get my 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you know, however long of a workout I want. It doesn't right. really matter as long as I do some kind of like physical activity. The benefits are huge. Dude. Like I just changes my day. I, I I feel very stiff because of how much sitting and like couch sitting I've been doing due to quarantine. But uh, if I didn't 
move in the mornings. Like I can't even imagine how awful I would feel. And and to the to your point earlier about uh, getting it out of the way early and coming back from your workout and feeling good, it's like that good feeling is the feeling of knowing that I've accomplished something. Some and you could even take it as far as I've accomplished something that most people won't do Mm -hmm. this morning. And then you can take comfort in knowing that when you're done with your crappy work day, you already worked out. Yeah. So guilt free, you can go home and do whatever it is you want to do. Yeah. So like, yeah, building the routine is the hardest part. Once it's routine, it's just life. But, yeah, I'm inspired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go home, man. <laughs> talk work, talk uh, to yeah. me in 20 days. <laughs> cool. I'm gonna be buff as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> dude. Me too. I uh, uh, my I mean, this is like, uh, I guess this is whatever. But myself, uh, and probably many others suffer from body dysmorphia. And what's that? Like, I don't like how I look. Oh, okay. Uh, mine's not that bad because like I have enough wherewithal to understand that I don't look bad, but I still, <laughs> yeah, man, you look like shit. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I, know. <laughs> I know, dude. So that's <laughs> like, so I, uh, I started working out in high school like 16 but i was like once a week i would go to the ymca and lift or something and then i really started working out when i moved in with brian okay actually i should say even before that so like i started hanging out with brian a lot uh at the very end of our senior year in high school and so that summer into uh the freshman year of college i would stay at his parents house with him a lot and we'd just like work out in the basement a ton so that's really where it started and when I, I think I was like 21, uh, by that time, I probably wasn't really working out much for the past, like I would say from like 19 to 21 or 22 or something. And so I was like 206 pounds eating crazy. Jeez. Yeah. Like every day. I didn't know that you'd lost so much weight. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I lost, uh, 50 50 pounds, 50, 60 pounds. Nice. Yeah. You yeah. got to give you some kudos here. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how about this one? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, seriously, though, that's. that's Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> so I, I, uh, I just feel like I met up with a friend of mine who was actually my neighbor for a couple of years in college, and he, before he moved back to Kalamazoo to go back to school he was living in Vegas as a personal trainer for a while so uh I went to him and I was like I just need to change something like what do I need to do and so he pretty much laid out like a not necessarily this is what you need to do every day but he he referred me to this website I think it's called hot for food maybe I'm wrong on that uh but if you're really interested I can find out. And so write in the comments if you're really interested, if hot for food might actually be a vegan blog. So if that's the case, let me know. It's something else. Is hot for food a vegan blog? Okay. It's not hot for food. Thanks, Kirsten. It's something else. Body for life. That's what it's called. Nice. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Body for life. And in on that website, they have like a shopping list and it's essentially just like, these are things you can get pretty much guilt free. Okay. And so another way that I've kind of learned that is like uh most of the stuff that is decent for you in a grocery store is on the outer edges. If you go into the aisles, it's where the more <laughs> super produce and refrigerated items is. and yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So <laughs> so uh learning kind of those principles, I started losing weight cuz I was working out uh, I like got back into the gym. My roommate and I at the time, uh, we went and he went with me. I think we did four days a week for two weeks and then he kind of dropped off, but I kept going. And then eventually this was like age 22, 23, like living remotely, not on campus or whatever. But Brian, 
he would get done with his corporate job and I would get done with my day job and we would just meet up at his house and then go to the gym together. And so it was nice having like an accountability person, but I was losing weight, uh, because I was working out regularly and eating better, but I wasn't eating well really yeah like i thought i was eating well well and it's it's easy to do too like i mean most people like unless you actually like dig into it and do the research and try to like figure out what's good and what's actually bad for you like it's it's a problem like it's it's hard to kind of sift through all the all the smoke you know for sure a lot of and i mean even to that extent like i feel kind of uncomfortable giving well it's been a long time since anyone's asked because i don't talk about my weight loss journey or anything anymore so people haven't really asked but even when they would like it's it's really hard to recommend something to somebody as a general it's worked pretty well to reduce sugar and bread yeah that's me (laughs) and sugar probably is a decent thing to just like blanket statement yeah for sure that's an easy enough thing to do just like look on the back of the label and see how much added sugar is in this thing and you know like that's yeah that's huge because people don't realize how much stuff has just tons and tons of sugar pretty much everything and then that just goes straight to fat and you know burnout energy loss all the all the tiredness yeah 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 there's i mean there's a lot to it so yeah. I figured out once I moved out here, I was like, let's uh, let's try the vegan diet. Mm-hmm. And so I think I went from like 206 to I'll say 180, uh, like thinking I was eating while well, I was eating better, but not really eating better. And then I did the like strict vegan, like, and when you're strict, strict vegan, uh, a lot of stuff that has sugar in it also has milk Mm -hmm. or eggs in it so it's like okay no sweets really either so i got down to like 154 or something uh ripped but like small yeah like skinny which i still feel like i'm skinny so uh yeah i i guess like i couldn't stop losing weight which made me uncomfortable so i started eating meat again and I was getting sick a lot. Hmm. Uh, I think so everybody's kind of wired differently internally too. Like yeah. diets, you know, like going all vegan definitely works for some people and then other people are, yeah. you know. And uh, with that, I mean, like I, I was able to understand the parts that I liked and the stuff that I didn't yeah, like. Yeah, it was a so good like experiment. Kirsten was vegan with me. So it's, uh, I mean, quarantine has got us a little off kilt, but before quarantine like even even though we did vegan for a year and we've been together five five years uh, six years we've been together for a while uh (laughs) we would still eat like salads primarily and they didn't even have to like we'd still use sometimes the uh meat alternatives like we're not uh totally against either way anymore so I'm happy with that because before I wasn't really eating salads and now I'm like figuring out a happy medium with everything. And yeah, I, I, uh, that's what it's about. I feel like, you know, just kind of everything in moderation. I I think that's a cliche, but, (laughs) but I mean, (laughs) that's true too. Yeah. right? Right. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's been my experience. And so working out routinely has just kind of kept me in this maintenance mode, but I I just feel better like yeah yeah Liz and I have kind of been doing like mainly vegetarian Mm -hmm. I guess um and a lot of that just kind of has to do with you know just kind of world sustainability like kind of like just meat industry as a whole is kind of like pretty messy yeah yeah for sure so that was kind of like our main main goal with it I guess is just kind of you know consume less meat for for the environment sure you know Hey. And, um, anyways, but like, it's, it's been good. Like it's, it's totally altered our diet. And I think the toughest part with it is just kind of, you know, we get into ruts with it. Like, mm. we'll just kind of keep the three, like these three recipes on repeat. Sure. Like sweet potato quesadillas, man. I love them, wow. but we, we yeah. get, we, you know, like <laughs> they get old after <laughs> happen, a little while, Yeah. but then, you know, you give it a month break and go right back to them cause they're great. But, <laughs> but yeah, like it's, it's, um, I'd say that's probably like our, our toughest challenge with it. And it's, it's been good. Mixing like I, I feel like I've, I've felt better ever since we moved over to that too. Yeah. 
and um but later yeah like for sure and yeah. like we're going out elk hunting i don't know if uh, your, your yeah. viewers know this but Not anyways yeah now they do now yeah. They do. <laughs> yeah no very excited about but yeah that. like that's i like i can get behind that because first of all elk is delicious number that's one the thing that pulled me out of veganism yeah the, was it'll getting do that. Into, <laughs> i was like cool i want to like archery sounds like a fun thing to do and this was actually soon after kirsten and i started dating and she was like you know, that does sound fun. So she got a bow and we were both vegan and both doing it. And we went to a target range in like an outdoor target range and was just like hitting these elk and deer targets from 60, 70 yards away wow. proficiently. And we're like, wouldn't it be the ultimate challenge to like actually go and yeah. Yeah. Like I would feel better about that than buying like a styrofoam packed meat package yeah 100 percent. So, i can't wait like i'm yeah <laughs> i i really hope we get one because i'm just we're buying a freezer for it if it happens nice. I thought <laughs> that's how we've been about it too like if if anyone if kyle downstairs if he gets one like we'll get the freezer yeah that freezer's on standby <laughs> yeah <laughs> for sure yeah, yeah man, i'm really excited Me about too. that but and the, like the i guess even the idea behind that is like you can put in all this work and at the chance to get one thing that would feed your family yeah. and other families maybe for like a whole year. And then it's like, if I'm eating meat that I pick up from the store, like I'm eating from different animals. Like, yeah, throughout, it's all kind of like, just compressed all together. You don't know, yeah. especially hot dogs, man. Ugh, I love yeah, them. No. But I don't, I <laughs> yeah. don't think about them all meat. No. Yeah. I've, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't indulged since I really figured, I mean like that and the chicken nugget stuff is just, yeah, <laughs> some of this stuff is just too much, but, uh, I feel like that one's like hunting is a guilt free. Yeah. hundred percent. I it's mean, just it's great a tough too. thing to like put down an animal. Yeah. Like mentally it's pretty difficult. Uh, but I mean, knowing that it's that one instead of thousands where you're eating like a piece of yeah i could go to a restaurant and i get beef shipped in from somewhere and then i go to the store and it's beef shipped in from somewhere else and the quality is different it's like not even eating the same thing yeah anymore so i think it would be good really just like for gut health in general yeah, to be sure. like kind of consistent and to your point of getting sort of bored with what you're eating maybe that would take place if you're like i'm a little bored of eating elk but probably not yeah probably not probably not <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i'm with food i uh i do like eating i like i definitely like eating stuff that's not good for me but it's usually more of a just food i just just whatever yeah. i just need like what's uh what's the thing that'll take you down the uh, the one food item I know Brian's is pizza. We get him with pizza all the time. Oh <laughs> oh, uh, like, well, I guess what do you mean by take you down? Like if, that's if probably like him break breaking like the vegan code. Yeah, right. I but but I'm not like, like is, I'm is, not there, is there one of those is there like one of those yeah but like you know it's terrible for you and you know, it, you know it's gonna make you feel awful but like Five I, Guys burgers and fries. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's yeah. I love it. Although I will say we had pho today yeah, and I ate all of it <laughs> and that's usually not the case. Like I usually can't do that, but I said to myself, it's bulking season. There you go. And it's not bulking season, but I ate a lot of pho <laughs> and then I curled up and I took a little nap and then you're here so, <laughs> so it's been fantastic nice but yeah i'm really looking forward to to taking our chances and going out there and i'll do it in just like an overnight camping trip too like yeah. i haven't gone winter camping since i was well actually liz and i if we went out for the la or for the first time we, do, we we did like this really cool um i'm gonna do the mitten thing just just because you gotta represent michigan yeah of course um but anyways is this mirrored? That's for us. Okay. Is this oh, for the camera oh, though? Oh, oh. I'm I'm trying to figure this out here. I think yeah, this Yeah, there way, you go. That, this, yeah, this yeah, is the yeah, way yeah. Right here. That's yeah. the way. Yeah, so anyways. <laughs> Maybe this, this is tough. So we got but the lower again, peninsula. I think I still show up. That might be mirrored. I don't know. Guys, we'll figure it out. Just if this like, is backwards, it's really hard to figure out how this is. Open up your right hand and then just like look at your right hand 
and follow along with where he's pointing and figure it out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, if you're listening <laughs> audio wise, you have no ignore idea. this part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can skip about the next minute or two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So right. anyways, um, I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and yeah. show you here. So, anyways, on on the mitten, um, there's also the wonderful Upper Peninsula. Yes. Which, geez, I'm all messed up. Never forget. <laughs> Never forget. Just do it your way. Okay. So it makes sense for you. I'm I'm even questioning that. Okay. So this is gonna be, <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be the mirrored version of the Lower Peninsula and then the wonderful Upper Peninsula. So yeah. for those of you who don't know, the Upper Peninsula is like Michigan's little secret. I'm covering my face. It too. might not even be mirrored. Yeah. I don't know. Not but, but um, anyways, uh, I went to school up there, and it's just beautiful up there. And um, anyways, I wanted to take my my now wife. We were dating at the time, but I wanted to like do a road trip where we would go through the UP. And um, anyways, we we kind of started in the lower peninsula and then went around the mitten, like up through um, Illinois and Wisconsin. Nice. And then um, we ended up in the UP, and we did this close to January 1st. I remember because um, my, my sister was born on New Year's. And we made it back to the house like downstate in time for her New Year's like birthday party or wow. whatever. So anyways, we ended up coming back to the house in the first. Wait, your sister? Hmm? You have a sister who's that much younger than you? Uh, she's four years younger than I am. Did oh. I mess this up somehow? I thought you said that your sister was born... Oh um, no no no! It's it's just her birthday party. Okay okay okay. <laughs> but I could have messed that up. So and yeah. I'm going off on a tangent here. Like, anyway, so anyways, yeah, sorry, <laughs> we okay. we ended up going around through Wisconsin up to the UP, and um, we decided to camp while we were up there. And this was of course my idea. And um, Liz, she she toughed it out because we ended up uh, camping and it got down to like negative five that night. I think oh, something yeah. like that. We were mm-hmm. in the Porcupine Mountains and it got cold, like yeah. super cold. And uh, anyways, I, I was the one that ended up freezing. She was totally fine. Nice. <laughs> we, we got out of that. We got a hotel that night because we were frozen. But then we went dog sledding the next day, which was a super Very cool. cool experience. Um, and then came back down, got back home to the little. Um, yeah. So I would probably argue that her being warm and you being cold. Best case scenario. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we had two zero degree bags, but I knew which one was better. And I was I was the proper husband that night and we gave, gave her the warmer bag. Yeah, yeah we would like, uh, uh, I have, I think it's a 30 degree or 32 degree bag and then a negative 20 degree You were telling bag. me about the negative 20 one. Oh, it's so that's the one you're going to take, right? Yeah, we'll like sleep in that together because nice. it's just like, it's big and it's it makes it not bad. Yeah, Liz and I will we'll take so. our zero degree bags now and we'll zip them together at the seam, so we pretty much just get like a double. Nice, bag just smart. Yeah. yeah, very smart. They do. Anyways, back to winter camping though. I'm yeah. stoked. We because I I don't think I've winter camped since I've never been. then. Real dude, it's the, gonna be the, great. The, I mean, it's it's we call it type three fun. So type <laughs> three fun <laughs> <laughs> is the type of fun that you have when. Um, it's not really fun in the moment. Sure. It's more like torturous in the moment. Yeah. But yep. they make for the best stories, you know? Like, you come back later and you just reminisce about that, and Dude. somehow you just, like, want that pain again. That's my whole thing on hunting. Okay. Like, yeah. I knew... It, I, didn't, I know it's going to be hard. I know it's there's going to be times where it's going to suck. But, like, I haven't... I, honestly, I haven't been able to face that yeah. in a while. And And... You know, I've changed a lot since the last time that I've been out hunting or really even in nature like that. So I think now uh, I'm not only going to appreciate it a bit more, but maybe even more observant. Like, I don't want to be obtrusive, but like... It would be really fun to just like carry this thing around and record. That's the Osmo. Oh, that's the Osmo. Yeah. Oh man, that that's thing's as much space as it takes. Yeah. The top part's a gimbal. Like, dude, that's the other bit. Like, I can't wait to make some content out there. I'm trying to decide yeah. like what cameras and because yeah. I don't I don't want to add on too much weight and that I'm thinking about as well as like putting whatever it is through the cold. Yeah. Uh, I have external batteries, so that part I'm I'm cool with, but. I may either just bring like this and I have a rig where I can like mount it with an external microphone where I could even use like that fuzzy mic or a lavalier mic or something and just uh, POV vlog style with it or the 360 camera like but uh, luckily it's you can do so much with these small things now Yeah, where 
although it would look super dope if I was carrying that around and like getting some awesome handheld log footage like we were talking about before we got on the podcast it's using something like this or even just your phone it takes a little a little more of the man I'm removing myself from the experience yeah, it takes right. a little more of that away yeah like even this I'll use it in auto mode it has manual settings it's like it'll look good yeah for sure it knows what it's doing in there yeah <laughs> yeah by the way did you happen to see that uh the ad no it's still it's still sitting as a thumbnail on my text do you <laughs> wanna <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd, I, I'd love to. yeah here, let's fire it up i'll play it i'll play it through the bluetooth because okay. you guys can hear it and it'll it'll sound familiar because it's kirsten's voice uh maybe eh, i don't know i don't know if i'll do the work in post to like show you guys <laughs> this but but you can also check it out uh if you want on YouTube or at story to record uh, dot com or Facebook dot com slash story to record. So this is just like the ad. Oh, nice. It says it's paired already. Cool. And you, you shot all this on the Osmo, right? So I shot, yeah, we shot all of this uh, advertisement on the Osmo pocket. Nice. I was watching an interview with William Hung earlier. Shout out to William Hung. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we shot all of this on the Osmo Pocket, but to take it a step further, we shot it in slow motion mode. Okay. And uh, th in slow motion mode, it auto crops it four times. Okay, yeah. So, so you've already got like a little bit of a telephoto feel on the. Is that what the... It's, I mean... Is that... I don't know why it auto crops it. Maybe to like have less shake. Uh, oh, maybe. Like maybe it'll it's it's something though because i should know this but like on on a lot of i think the new sony a7s they're not cropping when you go into like the oh, highest end right. settings like the i feel uh, like as the I settings know. go up it crops in on the sensor for a yeah. little bit more for whatever reason yeah um, you're right i mean those new sony's like 4k on or full frame i guess they've been doing that for a little while but <laughs> not mine they're like that's so nice yeah i'm shooting on the three right now and i'm pretty sure that one it crops in a little bit maybe i don't know that yeah i think it does i haven't shot in 1080 in a while yeah, but I, I know the a7r4 the new one that just came out yeah w well even that one i think it's it's probably been out yeah yeah i guess just came out six months whatever eight months pretty much just came out that one i know for sure had full full frame i have a, that's a a7r2 okay the a7r3 is doesn't have full frame 4k so that was the four and now they have that a7s a7s3 yeah that's or coming out oh they've got the s yeah, so the photo version is coming out next is that it's a video the r is photo oh okay that one's I actually like uh jailbroken oh, so nice. it can record more than 30 minutes oh no kidding time. okay because yeah. otherwise it would just shut off but that's a stupid tax law like if you if you buy that camera in the UK it'll record forever really but do i had no idea the US imposes a tax on recording cameras so that's why they it's like some of them have problems overheating but generally that's the issue because you could put a dummy battery in like i have yeah so yeah, it's and there's just there's no limit. I mean, the limit is your card size, and that's yeah, ah, that's crazy. Yeah. that would make my job so much easier. I shoot a lot of content where it's with the know, Sony. It's yeah, with with the Sony yeah. and my uh, and my Nikon both, and they both have. Well, the Sony limit is like twenty eight minutes, mm -hmm. twenty nine minutes, something mm -hmm. like that. My Nikon isn't even twenty. Same. That's how my Nikon was, and that's how I ever like the very first episode of taking the credit. I we had twenty minutes of footage and then it was a thumbnail for the rest because I didn't realize that they just shut off like that. Yeah, and that's always been one of my biggest quarrels with shooting yeah. with DSLRs is that time limit on there. But yeah, that I, I, that I makes just, me so upset that yeah. that's like a, just a stupid law. That's that yeah. limiting factor on it. I uh, looked. I mean, I actually asked somebody, <coughs> and they sent me a link to a YouTube video that's like you download this installer and it's just like uploading an app on on there uh and then it just lets you record That's unlimited awesome. does it uh does it void the warranty on the camera probably but mm -hmm. i bought this used anyway yeah. off ebay on, and what a deal like i got that uh 
battery grip over there mm -hmm. with that camera for less than you would just find the camera. And that grip is like $400 Jeez. new, which is stupid. But uh, yeah, I uh, I found that out, so I did that. But before that, I was using the Panasonic Lumix G85. Yeah. And I got that because it's a tw it's like maybe it's like 16 megapixel camera but it's uh, full like it also records unlimited so they I, mean, I don't know if they like ate the tax or something in selling mm -hmm. those cameras but it is like a sort of an entry level budget camera straight up if you are interested in learning how to use a camera or getting a camera get a g85 get a lumix g85 my iPhone 6 will take awesome pictures if I light the scene correctly. You can take awesome pictures with whatever, but at least you could record unlimited without having to worry about the nuisance of jailbreaking your camera or whatever. So anyway, that's my B cam now nice. for like projects and stuff, but... It also has like a flip out screen and touch screen. Yeah, that's a really that convenient like thing. I think that's really underrated. I mean, unless yeah. you're shooting with a monitor that you can flip back and tilt back towards you. Right. Like having that, that viewfinder sling out to the side, that's such a good thing. But like if I wanted to hold that in my hand, I wouldn't have I wouldn't want to have a monitor on it, but that doesn't have a flip out screen. Right. The new so one does, like, I think. Yeah, the yeah, new one yeah, does. Yeah. And it's like, of course. I dangle that carrot. But so that's it it is it's worth a lot it is, just yeah. to have that. I mean, I can't check false colors on the camera, just like the cameras flip out screen. But there's a lot of benefit to having like that all in one sort of package. So anyway, yeah, back to the ad. Yeah, <laughs> went off there for a bit, but uh, let's see. I'm gonna try and pull this up. So this is our contactless VHS conversion service ad. I think if you type that in on YouTube, it'd be awesome if it ended up showing me some love and sending you right to my ad, but there's a chance it doesn't. So if it doesn't, uh, type in story to record as well. And I'm going to play this. Oh, does this mean that I get advertising money if that's running an ad on my commercial? <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, I got one like. <laughs> <laughs> come on it's just like probably torture for people watching uh like an old man <laughs> trying to figure out a phone <laughs> okay here we go can you see that okay yeah definitely okay enter the world of the ad my family's memories can't stay buried forever VHS tapes with birthdays, holidays, and even loved ones who are no longer with us were tucked into a box and forgotten. Story to Record offers a simple way to bring those memories back to life. All I had to do was call them, and then they sent a representative to my doorstep to pick up my VHS tapes. Within a few days, I received an email with my video, and the VHS tapes were dropped back off to my doorstep. Now I can watch my family's memories anywhere and anytime. These memories will now live on for generations to come. All it took was one phone call. Sick. Dude, seriously, that is uh, really, really well done. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, and uh, like back to the Osmo thing, like would have never known that it was shot with with that little guy. But that turned in out in auto mode, in slow, like in slow mo mode. Yeah, yeah, dude, well done. Like thanks, that's bro. yeah, that's <laughs> like a, you got you got me working the feels <laughs> with that music there, <laughs> all those slow motion shots. Nice. Yeah, that's good. Cool. <laughs> well, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, I, uh, and like. To be very uh, upfront, I got done working on a Friday, and I, I th maybe I told you this uh, when we talked about it previously, but I got done working on a Friday, and I was like, I don't want this to take long. So 
we're going to use the Osmo. We're putting it on slow-mo. I had an idea of the, the shots that I wanted to get. Uh, maybe not specific like where they were going to be coming from, but her pulling the camera. Oh, hey, her pulling the tape out. Uh, whatever. I mean, what you saw. Yeah. But uh, right before I, right before we did that, I was scrolling through um, medication commercials for older adults. Okay. And so I was like stealing a vibe. Hmm. not stealing all creative work yeah, is I mean, just looking like, through like other people's stuff and just like, seeing what you like and how you want to kind of match it, it's looking at people that have done it successfully yeah you know? exactly what works yeah for sure and, and i slow shots long cuts black and white with the problem at the start mm -hmm. colorful solution based ending so yeah i i mean it was fun to make it's pretty easy it's to great. make all th yeah thanks man yeah, for appreciate sure. it yeah. yeah so it was cool so uh, i just like we did that and then i used that uh usb microphone and kirsten just like recorded the her saying that and then i just cut her vocals to line up a little bit better with the clips and nice yeah that's well done thanks man yeah pretty legit -y. yeah uh why doesn't liz like your shirt <laughs> I pick on her about it, but she I think she's she's come around to it. This is this is um good a high quality shirt that Liz's mother gave me. Oh, well then yeah, and, even more reason. And it's it. it's funny too because like I, I rotate like maybe three or four shirts. That, that might be exaggerating a little bit, but like I've got my favorites, right? <laughs> yeah. And of uh like many two, three <laughs> like two or three of my favorite shirts came from Liz's mom. Like nice. she just She's she doesn't it up. know style like very well. I mean, as much as a mother would, and she just nails my style every single time. Just like perfect. But yeah, it's it. I, I was picking on Liz earlier about not liking my shirt, but she likes my shirt just yeah. fine. As you well, yeah. But also, I think I just look go, too good. It's it. a nice. Yeah, probably that's probably <laughs> it. My my, uh, my stepmom's mom, my step grandmother, is the same way. Really? Where. I I was actually thinking about her earlier today. Uh, she, huh? No, Aaron's grandma. Well, your grandma's crazy, yes. Uh, <laughs> but we're not talking about your grandma. I was thinking about my step-grandma earlier today, and she always buys me, like, the, the nicest clothes uh, at Christmas. And I never really appreciated the clothes growing up but now i'm like very much respecting the thing she gets me because we talk around christmas and that's really it so she just like i sense that this is something that my grandson would like to wear and she hits it on the head every time that's and awesome yeah it's like pretty much uh, yeah like i know you said you have a few favorites in rotation a lot of the rotation is a uh, grandma purchase so shout out to people who you wouldn't think know how to do it but do it just right that's right yeah do you ever get uh socks and underwear for christmas for sure yeah, yeah. and i i miss it now as an Dude. adult like that's that's the thing having to buy your own underwear and socks it's it's a i haven't let that go yeah <laughs> i'm coming up on 30 now and like i still wish i had socks and underwear every christmas yeah well me too because uh we just went out and like it's been so long kirsten kirsten has been responsible for any new underwear that i've had probably since we've been together and uh i i just like it seems like an inconvenience to me uh, to like go shopping for that maybe. And then we were at Kohl's and I was like, you want to get underwear? And it's like, yeah, I should. So we grab it and then you get to the register and it's like, oh, that's $40. Yeah. It's like, Nothing hurts what? worse than having to buy underwear. Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for what? I think TJ Maxx has decided my, my underwear for like the last five years. Mm, I'll just go yeah. into the clearance section there, and they're usually fairly high quality. I got Used. some Columbia ones. Oh, okay. Like, they're great. <laughs> 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 Paid like seven yeah. bucks for them. <laughs> nice. Well, yeah. then that's the hookup. Yeah. I can't even think of where TJ Maxx is around here. I don't know around here. Yeah. I remember very well in Portage, Michigan, mm -hmm. but... Think of that and uh, their their other store, the Sierra Trading Post, they've got like it's TJ Maxx but like outdoor really? gear. Yeah, 
dude, that store yeah. is dangerous for uh, me that, like, <laughs> because yeah. I've got that mentality. It's not about how much you spend. It's about how much you save. Oh. <laughs> so I go into a store like that where wow. they, they're telling me I'm saving like 50 bucks on this. I got to have it. You know, wow. like, <laughs> I could see that being a very dangerous thing for me. Yeah. That's a good store. Yeah. I actually, uh, uh, yeah, I have a battery powered version of this light that's sitting over here. Mm -hmm. Because it was such a big sale. Yeah. I mean, sometimes like, you just can't turn it down. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I hear you, I yeah. guess, is what I'm saying. I definitely hear you. Does that ever turn into a regret? I don't think so. That's good. Yeah. I That's mean, good. Um, I mean, you use a lot of the outdoor yeah. stuff. I'm trying to think of one that I regret, but this this might be bad. <laughs> but I don't regret any of my spontaneous no, fine. purchases. But yeah, yeah, I feel like I've got I a pretty good that. grip. What's that? This is just like a dolly thing that oh. you could put the Osmo on and it would roll around or something. And yeah. I thought like, ooh, that could be kind of cool as like a B cam. And then I didn't think about any of the practicalities of like, well, if it's not like almost eye level with somebody then it's not really gonna matter and it makes a lot of noise yeah i didn't which, okay so like maybe good. if it were, if i were doing like product shots and i just needed like a circling shot of something it's a, i mean it's a cool concept but i think what would get it for me is like the rigging like the extra time it, even if i see I, i'm i'm kind of I have a slider and I used to have a gimbal yeah. like, and when I was shooting weddings, the slider became part of like, cause I, w I was shooting on, um, a D seven fifty and a D six ten, and okay. neither of them have internal stabilization. Oh, so the slider became this, this thing that I would use really often. But now since camera bodies have been putting stabilization inside, yeah. like the, the a seven having like the actual sensor that's on a gimbal, yep. like it's just so much easier just to handheld that thing and just and it was the same thing with the uh with the gimbal too like i got some really cool shots with it and back when i was doing weddings you know like i would do it for like dances and stuff like that mm -hmm. um and i got some really good footage out of it but it's it's kind of the same thing where i got rid of it just because i wasn't using it anymore yeah. like the amount of time that it takes to set that thing up and you know like actually i yeah i i hear that for sure uh like especially when you start doing this for work you do realize like do i really need this piece of yeah gear? and it's i like i like being light too mm -hmm. like part of me like just i'm so i've got this little um my pelican case and it's like the smallest case or biggest case that you can take on as a carry-on on, on a flight so it like fits in the overhead sure. bin. but like my essential gear like all fits in, in there a yeah oh, okay. in, a, in that case, little yeah. pelican case nice. and like i can pretty much film like there was one time i had to um i got this kind of spur of the moment um uh, it was like an advertising gig so kind of backpedaling a little bit my sister used to work for um the jackson school of arts in oh, jackson okay. michigan and um anyways it was kind of funny. It was actually just before Liz and I were taking our um, flight out here to Denver for the first time to do the interviews. And um, I just thought that I was like meeting these people to talk about doing a video for them. Sure. But we had a meeting and at the end of it, they're like, uh, can you do it now? Oh, wow. <laughs> and luckily I was bringing a bunch of photography gear with me mm. to Denver for, I don't know why. I had it with me. Like I had what was in my car and I think it was my Pelican case. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Rest of the afternoon's wow. free. Our flight isn't until seven. Let's film. Wow. So I used like a monopod, my D750. What all was in there? It was a, it was a bare bones kit, but like, yeah, we filmed just before we got on the plane and like hopped on the plane. I edited the entire time while wow. we were in Denver and had it back to him like 48 hours later or something like that crunch time yeah man. well it was it was quick money you know yeah. and, and the opportunity presented itself but like being able That's to do so nice. that with like a limited amount of gear like you're kind of like it's like a go bag for for filming or whatever and there's something just satisfying about that i think yeah and there's like a happy medium too because if you're too stripped then it's the production value have, yeah, goes down as much control but yeah. but there then there's like i mean i'll take that cart with us it's a jobs and it's we don't need everything in there. Yeah. And there's something not so great about that too. Yeah. I just hate However, hauling extra gear too. Like yeah. the more trips I have to make to my car, the angrier I get. See, and the cart helps. Yeah. For sure with that. But and and then there's also like, f uh, to an extent, there's like, 
if I need to have this thing, I don't want to have to drive back home. But but I've learned more flexibility and like these lights that are casting the green, the wands, I'd been using uh, with like the daylight balanced version as a uh, fill and hair oh, light. That's perfect, yeah. And so I got the second one because I'm like, I could l- I could light a scene. Yeah. I could light somebody. Like I've watched YouTube videos with people using wands. Uh, there's Westcott is a company that makes some yeah. like expensive stuff. They call them ice lights. Yeah, I like know the ones. Three hundred dollars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is like the same thing. Yeah. By all intents and purposes and, and, and there's like a battery 50, inside of them too 50 dollars they're char- they actually charge i have that one on a charger right now nice. but they and just the battery's all like enclosed yeah, inside of the one that's yeah. slick yeah that's that's really cool yeah so like i'm thinking like if i need a real run and gun i'll take those two lights yeah and then i just need like the tripod with my camera yeah so yeah uh it is there's there's something to something enjoyable about like new gear and learning it and stuff but then it's crippling in the same way yeah for sure it can weigh you down i need to use it because i have it but i have nothing to do with it so yeah i feel very fortunate though that i hadn't gone overboard like i mean i'm pointing to this and it's here because i don't need it honestly that handle for my rig i don't really need that either but maybe i'll use it someday like i honestly i have these things here as a reminder that I don't need to just get things because they could just end up here yeah. in the junkyard. I kind of made that that mistake my uh, when I was doing wedding photography before I was doing films. Yeah, I uh, I went out and I'm like, okay, I'm doing this as a business, and like I made the mistake of just kind of like buying everything all at once. Yeah, and I just like filled up a you know five thousand dollar Amazon card or whatever. Here we go, and. Yeah, that was such the wrong way to do it because I, I didn't end up using half of it. Right. You know, I was kind of learning as I went and figuring out what I liked. And I instead of kind of replacing one piece at a time, like you should. <laughs> I think I think it's so easy to get caught in the consumer yeah, side. Yeah, and that's of the like thing is I business. probably spent like 60 hours just researching what it is that I want, exactly. you know? Like, so they got me for time, they got me for my money. Yep. And, yeah. Dude, and I, and I mean, I've, I've certainly been there, but I feel very fortunate in that the stuff that I've collected for business has been for business and not really like, like I, I've had a C stand in my Amazon save for later for a long time. Something that would definitely be nice, but I don't really need it. And so I feel very fortunate that I haven't pulled the trigger because there are a lot like a slider. There are other things that are expensive that would help, but like, what I want and where I've framed it to a certain extent. I mean, I have the stuff that I need to do a job, but for example, say somebody hires me to record them talking with somebody else in their family. Mm -hmm. So I need two sets of stuff. Yeah. I have that a second set of stuff saved in my save for later, Mm -hmm. but I'm not going to buy it until until I need it. Yeah. And like, I've gone wrong with that before, like before I was even into business, I was just thinking like, how can I get my production quality to look good enough to where people are going to think I'm like set apart. And if you look on YouTube, it's like, get this gear, get this expensive yeah, lens. Right. Get this, here's, here's a link to Amazon. Yeah. This, yeah. <laughs> this cube, cube light that will cast no light for you, but we're going to put like a dope trap music song behind the advertisement. Right. And then you're going to be like, Oh, I need it. Yeah. There are so many things like that where you can get caught up and where I've gotten caught up in the past. Like I definitely have a boneyard of gear that I don't need anymore. But there's also like it's so nice to be on the other side where it's like I need somebody else to pay for this if I'm going to get it. So, yeah, yeah, that's brought a lot of comfort. And like I love cameras. You love cameras. But neither of us are like, we need to spend five grand and get this A7S III yeah. as soon as it comes out because it's so sick. Dude, I've been dragging my feet on selling my D750 for the last two years. <laughs> like, I just, like, it, it's, there's cameras that I could, you know, sell that, invest like another 500 bucks or something like that. Yeah. And have something that would 
work a lot better in a lot of different ways, but it still works great. Like I can only shoot 1080 on it. And um do you export frames? stuff in 4K though? No, well I do. Um no, I don't export in 4K. Neither I import I. it into the computer, but yeah. I I like having the zoom on Yeah, there. that's fair. Yeah. That's and fair. that's and that's just that's that's what I use 4K for yeah. pretty much is just having that, Same that to, uh, ability yeah. to crop. If I want to make a shot more interesting, I can keyframe it and move yeah. it around a little bit. So that's fair. Yeah. I do that too. So yeah, and yeah. then the stabilizer built into the into the A7 man, like that's just been great. Like yeah. I've been I've been doing a lot of handheld work with that thing, and it works really well. You I, know, I mean, and a ni- a really nice thing about if you had if you chose to do. Uh, another Sony is that the color profiles would be the same. Yeah, and so, that color like, card that you recommended, mm-hmm. I've been using that, and that's been matching things up great. Yeah, that I, oh, it definitely helps. It definitely helps. For me, I still had to like when I use the Panasonic anyway, and I tried to color match them. There's some obvious contrast differences in dynamic because, range yeah, differences uh, too, specifically like. because of dynamic. I mean, right. the Sony and Log is of course going to have like. What I mean, whatever that's a A seven R two. I actually had like to eleven uh, stops or something. But then I'm using a Panasonic, which doesn't have any log profile, but just like the contrast and everything knocked all the way down. Mm-hmm. It yeah, it's it's like apples and oranges, and then you're trying to make them look like they're the same fruit and that's essentially. Tough. So yeah. it, it it was a little bit tough with those two cameras, but like again, if this were really if business gets to a place where it makes sense, then yeah, I would get probably like an A6500. Yeah. And because it has S log too. But knowing that the reality for what I do, since I'm not going to be bungee jumping with my camera, I don't need 120 FPS. At, in 4k yeah, you figure out what you need like yeah. the stuff that you're doing on a regular basis like you you know what kind of technology you need my my d750 still working for me and right. that and I'm, I'm attached to the glass too i've that's got two fair. two lenses that i just absolutely love on that yeah, camera that's hard to do yeah that's and like they make with. adapters and i when i'm shooting video it's manual focus anyway sure but well then yeah yeah at least you could keep the glass i, I think mean, that's, that's more important than the body yeah, really exactly but being attached makes sense yeah like and if i'm going to shoot photos like i want to yeah. i want to have that autofocus yeah. again you yeah. know and so it's yeah but um yeah super impressed with the sony though like yeah. that a7 i've been shooting with that pretty much all quarantine season and it's um that's that's a sweet camera man they got a lot of beast, yeah, yeah. They, they figured a lot of cool stuff out with that one yeah yeah and i mean i guess like just kind of going back to uh earlier you had mentioned how if you see a good deal you look at like how much money you're saving almost related like you know how much money you're saving by not needing some of this yeah, gear so then right. it's like oh i don't ne- i don't need the new thing yeah for like, sure there's a lot of comfort in in that too but that's been the biggest thing like this entire quarantine season like i've pretty much i don't think i've bought any new gear just just because like i want to be as profitable as possible right, right now like yeah. while things are i don't know things yeah. are still a little little unsteady we don't know everything and like it's anything could happen you know so iPhone that's 12 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but um but yeah just just being mindful of my my budget yeah and, that's like, fair knowing what to spend money on and more more importantly what not to spend money on but yeah yeah I've bought stuff for sure <laughs> during quarantine, but yeah. I will say that like uh, my budget for other stuff is pretty much non-existent. Like for a long time, I would buy every UFC pay-per-view, which would be like one or two a month, which is like a hundred thirty dollars if yeah. there are two of them. And and I love the UFC still, but I've been able to step like remove myself just a bit enough to the point where I don't feel the need to buy that. So it's like there are things that I would spend money on or whatever, even gas. I work from home now. So it's like yeah. that money. I, I guess I am coming up with excuses to spend money on things, but I, at this point I'm, there's nothing like, like you said, like I, I, I'm cognizant of, what's coming in and I just want to be more focused on making things come in. The trouble I guess for me too with that is like I need t- 
to spend marketing dollars to make business come in. Yeah, that's a tough thing with yeah. with advertising. But I and Kirsten and I talked about this, like consulting with somebody who knows advertising. Yeah. Uh, because like I've I've definitely spent money advertising with no financial result. So it's like there's something that other people are doing that I, I mean like there's yeah. there's people that do that as their full time job. Yeah. You know, like right. that's and so now it's kind of like that's what I'm thinking my money should be going to. Yeah, it's like what we were gear or something is like what we were talking about before. Like yeah. I, I love filming but editing is painful it's <laughs> the worst sometimes for sure yeah um yeah. but yeah like you had mentioned you know possibly contracting it out and that's such a yeah. great idea like i'd never never even thought of that that you can pay Dude. somebody to kind of feel what your edi- editing style is and outsourcing so important yeah i'm gonna push that camera back because i literally i don't know if my pup bumped it or something but it looks like you're getting kind of cut off so once oh, okay thanks kirsten's engineering for us thank you just uh, tilt it a little bit toward Mike. Yeah, not enough camera on me over here. Yeah, yeah. There you <laughs> go. That's wonderful. Oh, that's so much better. Sorry to all my listeners. You didn't even get to see his right arm like most of this time. So if that's the case, I apologize greatly. And my framing was off or something happened, but yeah, that's okay. Right now arm, you can my see. My right arm's the better arm. Too. I know. And well, that's why I, I, yeah, I feel like I uh, owe you a real sincere apology. And I'm sorry for that. And, uh, <laughs> It looks like maybe your maybe your arms in. Maybe there's just too much on this monitor for me to tell because I don't have it in 4K, so I can't see it clean. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I get so OCD about Framing? this. Oh. I mean, uh, oh, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I and I told you too. Like I had everything set, and then I was like, I should slide this back. And then I was like, Why did I even? Why did I move this? Yeah. But Kirsten gets on me because all we'll be oh, i mean like that we'll just be talking and then i'm like is that light flashing behind you like we need to fix this or <laughs> just save it but yeah i get very caught up in the uh production part but that's something i uh i've been very interested in lately too is like maybe i just need to be exploring this as a business as well like yeah, like I could, setting up podcasting studios. Yeah. Yeah, why not, man? There's if enough people that are... I, well, yeah. Um, I think there's like a huge need for that. For businesses in particular. Uh, I mean, it might be a tough sell right now, but... Uh, and not I'm not saying right now because of COVID, but right now because, like, kids know or younger people know what's cool before businessmen or most businessmen or older folks will catch on so like facebook is lame that's for kids now grandmas are on it instagram's lame that's for kids now everyone thinks it's cool tiktok's lame that's for kids soon it's gonna be just what instagram was what facebook was like uh podcasting i think is in that same sort of realm yeah. Where it's like most people are like, I don't listen to podcasts. Like I don't listen to music anymore. I, so if that's a reality for me and I l- loved listening to music, then it's a reality for more people eventually. And it's so anyway, I think it's a growing thing. And yeah, and if I could being ready to being ready to pull the trigger and like once it starts to catch on a little bit more that's that's great yeah i mean i have all of the tools and since this is the 57th one even though i can't get the framing right whatever but uh i have all the tools to do this and we could do this live like if i wanted to just run that into the pc with the capture card here we could be doing this live so if somebody wanted to do it live they could i could consult people on how to set it up yeah uh, front end, back end, editing. So, I mean, I don't, like, I never thought about this as, like, a monetized thing other than just, like, something that my wife and I do. But it is a skill. Yeah. Even though, like, it is very simple to start a podcast. Getting that production value to yeah. kind of a, 
that, yeah, that's an acceptable the, level, you know. That's like, the kicker. Because that's the thing is, like, if you want somebody to like really look into your work and just focus only on your work, you have to kind of get that production level up to a certain point. Yeah. Where you're not kind of, you know, looking around their house and they're, you know, distracted by the lighting and like, oh, yeah, all the little things. And yeah, I th- that's exactly it because it is simple enough to plug your headphones in, record straight into an app like Anchor. Shout out to Anchor. Uh, record straight into an app like Anchor or even voice memos on your phone and then upload it later as an audio podcast. Like there are so many simple ways to do it. I guess adding video brings in like a much more talented aspect of doing it. Uh, for a long time we used, uh, well, it's in a box over here, but for a long time we used this camcorder that I bought at a pawn shop down the road used that didn't have a battery. So I was like... uh essentially I got a free warranty from them because we didn't know if it would work and I got money off of, so it was like $40 cause it was labeled 50 and I was like, I don't know if it works. So I'm just buying something without a, ba- anyway. So we used this thing that shot in 1080 for like the first 17 episodes. And then I got the Panasonic, but even then I didn't even understand white balance. Like now I'm to a place where I, I, understand the lighting and everything so like i feel like i could pitch good quality video podcast but also if you wanted to do just audio this does sound better than just headphones in your like the little microphone on your yeah yeah. and like that's a microphone right on on that one that you have so like oh nice that i mean you could use those headphones plug it in your phone and do an audio one or set up a second phone and use that as your video. But yeah, I think you're right. Like it's been, even though I used a camcorder, like we were using, li- we were using the m- these microphones, like the stands have been here since the start and legitimate audio preamps with the Zoom uh, back then. So this part has always been important to me. So there are, even though there are like very cheap ways to do it, I, it was important to me to spend a little bit of money up front to at least have it sound good. Yeah. So that's huge. Like people, people don't understand how big of a difference that high quality audio makes, but I mean, it's, it's one of those things that, I mean, you notice it, but you can't point it out. Like it just, it it seems like it's not as good of quality and it's tough to put your finger on, but like audio is one of those things where if it's not great, like it's, it's It's, distracting. And especially for folks like us. Is it the shoes? Is it the shoes? (laughs) (laughs) One more. Okay. <laughs> that's yeah. my favorite feature yeah i know uh just having everything right here is so awesome yeah I, no I that sh- board is great yeah there are so many i uh invest a lot of time researching yeah. things before i make significant purchases and this was like i was like why well, I, I just need this when it came out this came out the same time that I was that I bought the Zoom H6 that I ended up going with that doesn't have like these features, but since then they've done a firmware update so where there's like so much more to this thing now and I was like okay now that's a legitimate piece of gear yeah. so yeah having stuff like that it's it's like having the stuff inspires me to make something out of the stuff right like I, I don't want to just have it just to have it like I want to use it i don't know if i love it and i have it i should try to make money with it because then i will love what i do (laughs) even more i guess so yeah i don't know there's a lot to that do you want to wrap things up i mean we could yeah how long we been going hour and 12 okay yeah Yeah. that's feels about right yeah Yeah, i would say so i think we should do a follow-up to hunting yeah absolutely i think that would be great yeah i mean good or bad however it ends up it won't be bad it's not gonna very be worst it's gonna be type three fun yeah but um, i mean yeah but it'll what's type two we haven't decided okay yeah okay i'm not, I'm not sure what type two fun is yeah that's fair yeah um <laughs> i thought like maybe like you see somebody get hurt and it's funny and then it's like uh, could be uh, it. maybe that's four <laughs> i don't know it's a little darker it's yeah be four, uh, yeah five or something i don't <laughs> know but 
I'm really excited for it. Yeah, I'm looking too. forward to it. We'll have to figure out some more of those specifics. And also, I forgot to mention that I have I have the subscription to an app called Onyx Hunt. And it's nice because it works in airplane mode, too. But, like, it's essentially like a topography map app that you can, like, pinpoint locations. Like, Kirsten and I have, like, pointed exactly to where we would sit for where we're hunting and so like if we're want to come back to the same spot i can like set this pin That's and then slick. we can just like hike right back up to that spot or you saw like you can mark like take a picture of a watering hole and then set that as a pin so you click on that pin and it shows you the watering hole so you're like oh we need to go back over this way so anyway if once we know where we're hunting i could get a better idea like some of those fundamentals like north sides of mountains so the shaded areas i don't know if that matters so much in rifle season because it's not hot anymore but anyway a lot to talk about still i'm excited man i'm so me pumped too. Yeah. me too it'll be it'll be type one fun type one for sure yeah so thanks again yeah. for making the trip up here and hanging out and doing this like it's uh, that's been a quick i would say pretty damn quick hour yeah, flew by 15 minutes so oh, man it was so so great being here too I've, I've been wanting to do this for a little while now and i'm glad i got the chance to i appreciate it man i gotta say like uh i i guess we don't really have like friends over to do this really i mean a couple of times it's happened but out of 57 episodes it's nice to have it's nice to have you even want to do that so shout out to mike thanks for being here uh shout out to people listening yeah. like straight up i i said this at the end i should have started it off with this but last week i was looking at some of the analytics for the audio listeners so youtube shout out to you guys i don't know specifics about who you are who watched this well i don't know specifics about anyone but i get more data about folks who listen and data is cool for nerds like me and i find that there is an audience in singapore shout out to singapore nice australia what's up uh we have germany's in the house we have the uk in the house i believe we have vietnam in the house if we don't have vietnam in the house you're in the house in my heart so shout out to the people who like are just out there listening because that's what's up man when it comes down to it, that's what's up. So U.S. fans, love you. Worldwide fans, love you more. <laughs> 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 yeah, anyway, thank you so much for tuning in episode 57. I uh, appreciate you guys, as always. Um, check out Story to Record stuff. Go to teespring.com and search up the Story to Record storefront. Buy a shirt. They're comfortable. Uh, or don't just look at look at them at least. So thank you. See you guys next week.